Man, I can't believe I've been holding on to this gem of an episode for so long. But I just, I had to wait for the right time to release it because the person who I'm interviewing, Jeremy, he's uh, he's doing big things right now. He's on tour with A Boogie with a Hoodie. Uh, if you haven't heard of him, please uh, look him up and get out of the rock that you're hiding from under. <laughs> um, but he's, uh, he's touring across the nation. And what's even better is that he's also going to go do a Europe tour now. And so, of course, because Jeremy is part of JMB Marketing, which I'm going to get more into and he'll get more into um, as, the later, as the episode progresses, uh, that he's the official videographer for them. So he's the one documenting everything that happens behind the scenes with A Boogie and his crew. And it's just such a cool glimpse to get to see all of that, to get to, to, to witness all of that. And you really do get the the fly on the wall perspective because of the way that Jeremy records and and shoots and his style of shooting. It, it lets you feel like you're actually there, and I love it. It's it's one of my favorite things that he does, and and I love his style because of that. And um, I just wanted to give you guys a little forewarning before starting the episode. There might be a little bit of cursing. It's just natural talk. It was two friends catching up, talking about life and and of course what he's doing, which is huge things. Um, and I just can't wait till he gets back too, cause uh, he's got even bigger things brewing, I bet. And uh, that, that's why I waited a little longer for this episode to release it, because like I said, I wanted to release it uh, kind of when the tour was coming to a close and this new tour was starting, which um, I'm gonna post all the, the details of that in the show notes as well, and all of Jeremy's information too, just in case you wanna get a really fire ass video, you'll know who to hit up, because my man is really slanging uh, dope videos in 4K, like it says on his Instagram bio. <laughs> Uh, but with, with, I just really want you guys to understand that there, there are there is some cursing, so be careful with that. If you have virgin ears, just uh, make sure to block those out and tune those those words out. But other than that, man, I, I can't believe I was holding on to this nugget of knowledge for so long because Jeremy has a has a story, and I, I I'm glad that I'm able to share it with the world too. I'm not gonna lie, one of my favorite things to do when I was growing up is go on YouTube and look at the music videos of artists and kind of just get a glimpse into their world and you can kind of just get immersed and lost in kind of everything and the lavish lifestyle that they live and you can you can really get lost in that and that's what I would kind of do. And also with the autoplay, it was kind of just automatic, you just kind of get stuck, stuck doing it. Um, but I always wanted to feel that process that's why my minors was film too so in in college so I always had a love for the background of the the movie making and the music video making process and so with that uh, uh I thought it was only fitting to get someone on who's been doing that and been doing that successfully and very well um without further ado Jeremy Bray uh, a, lo- a friend too long time friend um if you don't mind introducing yourself Jeremy what's good how you man? doing what's up Nico man yeah appreciate you having me on your podcast today of course bro appreciate you making t- I know how busy you are you're about to even go on tour man with uh, a boogie yeah. we'll get to that we'll get yeah. to that but uh <laughs> if you could bro just so so what's JMB marketing for someone who might not know Oh uh, well First off, how everybody doing? Um, I am Jeremy Bray, um, owner of JMB Marketing LLC. Um, now y'all may know me as directed by JMB, but um, JMB Marketing um that's simply a film production company. Um, the reason why I call it marketing and not film because from all the visuals that we do, we make sure that we attack it attack it from a marketing aspect. Mm-hmm. So um, when you come to us and you know you want a music video or a brand video anything for social media we don't just simply give you a video and then just you know give it off to you and let you do what it do no we're actually going to put together a plan and create a way to actually get your video to get engagements through social media Mm -hmm. through digital marketing and it's a full service because you guys shoot edit everything you guys are part of the whole process yes um you will get pre-production production production, and Mm post-production from us all in one roof and that's what's convenient about it too and even though you're doing music videos right now you know you you can corporate videos is the long term as well too you can get into all that yeah definitely um i've definitely had some um, past experience with corporate Mm -hmm. um videos um i worked with um a commercial real estate company um crossman and company um it was a real dope experience um Got that connection through a friend in college when I attended FAMU. And, um, yeah, so through the course of work, I was able to, you know, get the 
the, the glimpse of both worlds, you mm -hmm. know? And like you said, the long term goal is for that corporate world. Corporate, because, yeah. you know, that it's that good money, you know. They pay they pay better money. than 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 artists, I guess, or music videos and stuff. Um, it's not a hassle to get what you want, you know. Oh, um, you gotta explain yeah, that. What, okay. do you, what do you mean so, by that? Um, as far as the music industry is very different than the corporate world. Um, as far as the glimpse and taste that I've got, and for mm -hmm. my experience, um, one thing about the corporate world is that um, you can come in there, you know, hand somebody a resume, or if they come to you looking for a video, you tell them exactly what you want, they give it to you, no problem, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. In the music industry, it's quite different. Um. You can reach out to somebody, you know, and offer your services, but it's always going to be, um, I guess you can say, um, first impression, you know? Okay. So let's say you do reach out to an artist, you know, you want to give them a music video. It's not just, oh, okay, come on and shoot. No, they want to know who you work with. They kind of want to see what your social media is looking like. They want to know what connections you have. So then that's what goes back into that marketing aspect that I mm -hmm. said with my brand, you know? Nobody in this day and age just wanted video and just, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's trying to go viral, you mm -hmm. know? Everybody's trying to, you know, be seen and be heard and, you know, and use their voice. So um, I could say that's like, oh, um, yeah. It's yeah. So yeah. so you gotta have a, a complete package because, like you said, you're also a big reflection on the artist yeah. because you're you're documenting what they're doing. So you gotta be you're part of the crew. You yeah. know, you're actually like a part of them. And so being a part of them, they want someone that they they know that they can trust. Yeah, definitely. Um, I could definitely say um, yeah, that definitely was the case. Um, cause like I said, like with the um with the toys, I have definitely been on like two to three tours yeah three tours with them so far mm -hmm. and i could definitely say like when i went on that first tour it was kind of like you know i had to be you know a little standoffish and just you know let them know i'm there for just business you know not just pleasure and i could say um that's one thing that i um that i've remained you know what i'm saying to have that relationship it's with business them. first yeah it's business first you know what i'm saying it's more than just you know the whole party and having fun because you know at the end of the day you know he got his you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. he's getting his money i'm trying to make mine you know what i'm saying yeah. i'm not in it for the fame you know what right. i'm saying for the pleasure but i'm in it for to you know get that long term money find my connections get my work you know be you know what I'm saying yeah and so how did you kind of start that out with getting your connections because you were saying that you get a lot of people who DM you direct message you um, through um, Instagram yeah, yet, right so yeah. so they just is that kind of how it starts is you kind of just um, get a message and then well you work as from far there? as how I started it was um different um when I got my um camera and my setup and everything I actually put out a post this is when I first ever started and I was in Tallahassee Florida when I was going to school at FAMU and I said um, I'm doing three free music videos for anybody in the town anybody in the city and um, a couple of people DM me you know what I'm saying I was interested but then you know I chose the three people that you know I want to work with whatever and from there I did that f free music video because I knew that was like planting a seed you know mm -hmm. I knew from there that people was going to see it and they was going to want videos and I knew from there I can charge them you know and one thing I knew about it I was coming with quality you know mm. I just I knew I was coming different so um yeah after I did them first three music videos um which they were pretty cool and then um yeah more people came to me and then that's when I just started charging you know and mm -hmm. then it just started going up and up from there and then that's when I started getting into the um the whole um, club scene I was doing a lot of club videos and from there like promo vids yeah like promo videos mm -hmm. and um with um DJ Wavy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Tallahassee and and um and Dream Team. Shout out to Dream, Dream Team. Team. <laughs> yeah. Dream Team was actually the first um promotion group to book me for like a, a major event. It was for DJ Esco. Oh. That was the first time one of my videos ever went viral. Wow. It was dope. Yeah, it was crazy, man. It was a big party in um, Tallahassee. I can't remember exactly um what event it was, but I just know it was dope and shout out to them, man. That was my first time, mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying, ever like you know, being around that, you yeah, know, yeah. and really, you know, making a dope video for it. And, yeah, he showed me recognition for it and everything. So, yeah. Like you said, planted the seed. And look, yeah, it's, exactly. it's worked out so far. Well, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, basically after, you know, doing those club videos and everything, um, I was doing a lot of videos because um, a lot of artists was coming to Tallahassee, like, back to back to back because it's a college town. So, you know, they're, they're always coming through, you know, yeah. get, you know, get the little show money or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so... Um, I was just killing the videos. I'm talking about killing it, killing it. Like, everybody, you know what I'm saying? They, like, not everybody, like, knew who I was, but everybody knew of Champion Marketing. Like, right. I always used to get, like, calls and stuff. Like, yo, I heard you don't want the videos, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I'm killing it out there. So, long story <laughs> short, um, one of my friends actually showed me um, a boogie. See, because I'm going to be real with you. Before I um, did the um, first video I ever did for him, 
I wasn't really familiar with his music like mm-hmm. that. And um, one of my friend girls, she came to me, showed me the music played, and I was like, yo, I was like, this is pretty cool, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's pretty fire. But I didn't really know who he was, you know right. what I'm saying? I was just like, okay, this is just a New York nigga rapping, you know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, melodic style. I was like, this is cool, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I didn't really feed into it too much, you know? Until um, he had a show out there in Tallahassee. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be real with you. I, don't, I didn't even plan on going to it like that, neither. Mm-hmm. I remember I was at home, you know what I'm saying? I was with my daughter and everything, and I got a phone call from one of the promoters, Cross Promo. He hit me up and he was like, um, yo, um, yeah, Boogie's coming. He got a show, blah, blah, blah. Had road manager. He was looking for a videographer that, for that night. And I was like, um, cool, yeah, I'll come out, blah, blah. He said, they're going to pay you this now, blah, blah, this and that. I was like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? One thing about me, when I go out and work, no matter who you are, I'm going you know to give you my best at all times. Of course, you know? yeah, of course. So, but um, yeah, I went there. I met up with Kristoff. That was the road manager. and um, He was real dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, he introduced me to Boogie and DJ Fresh and... Um, yeah, and Bubba and everybody, and it was real cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they was cool, and they was humble, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because before I went there, I did do some research. I was, like, yo, I was like, yo, he's really hot right now in New York, you know what I'm saying? But meeting him, he was, like, very humble, you know what I'm saying? He ain't come off asshole or nothing mm-hmm. like that. So, rode him to the show, you know what I'm saying? Went out there, did a video for him, killed it. But one thing that um <laughs> stumped me about the show is that, like, his energy, you know what I'm saying? Because, um I got uh, like, again, Tallahassee was a small town, you know what I'm saying, where I went to school at. And a lot of artists, when they come, they just come, get their bag, and they out. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? They just, they piss poor show. Get their bag means get their money. Yeah, get their money. They go get their money, and <laughs> then, you know, they out of there. But I noticed when Boogie came, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he was really, like, he was enjoying the vibe. Like, he was really yeah. fucking with Tallahassee. Well, I don't know my vibe. You good, you good. <laughs> you he good. was really fucking with Tallahassee, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And he was performing, like, he was going crazy, and then everybody just, I just felt the energy and the mm-hmm. vibe, and just the, you know what I'm saying? Like, the artistry behind it, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, it was just real dope, and I could say that's what made me, like, gravitate more to his music you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying i was able to see like his passion behind it you know what i'm saying i was just really dope to see somebody young and have a passion of music like that and really making it and going mm-hmm. crazy you know what i'm saying doing what they have to do yeah doing what they have to do it to, like you said make it yeah so yeah so i killed that video for him went back to him and um yeah they was cool and it was like yo we got a show in tampa um pull up you know what i'm saying and me i was like okay cool i'm coming and then, um, yeah, so then I, as soon as I went back to my crib, I knew I had to give him that video. You feel yeah. me? I had to show him that, you know what I'm saying? Like, this you is were what serious. I do. Yeah, yeah, I was serious. I went home that night, like, right after the show, until my 3, 4 a.m., edited the video, went crazy, sent it to him that morning. I just remember he sent me back flame emojis. And yeah. I was like, oh, it's showtime. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just know I was like, it's showtime. So, went down to um, Tampa. Um, but yeah, I, I drove and everything. You feel me? I ain't even want to. Did you that. sleep? What What was that? Nah, I'm gonna be real. It was I was grinding. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I'm yeah. gonna be real. Before I even like you know what I'm saying, started doing work with HBTL and everything. Like I was always you know what I'm saying, grinding, yeah. doing this video stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like with local and independent. You know what I'm saying? Like they always knew me for that. Feel me? So like I just knew that. I had the the drive and I, I knew what I was doing. Oh, but you had the adrenaline. Yeah, 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 but it was time to take it to the next level. Yeah. You feel me, son? So it's like, yeah, it was dope. So yeah, I went down to Tampa, did that video for him, killed him, drove down there, yeah, showed him, you know what I'm saying? I got my own hotel. Like, I ain't need him, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I'm out of the business, whatever. Kit, killed that video and then um, that's when I was talking to the road manager, Christoph, and I just told him straight up, like, yo, bro, you feel me? Like, this is what I do. Like, you know, like, this is where my passion is at now. Like, I'm going at it full throttle, like as you can see, y'all satisfied with the videos, I love them, like, you feel me, like, when something comes up, a tour or anything, hey, I'm not saying pick me and choose me, but just keep consider me in mind, me. yeah, consider, consider me, you know what I'm saying, just have me in a thought, just, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. Look, you know what I'm saying, like, mm-hmm. I do this, you yeah. know what I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> so then, yeah, long story short, you know, a um, month or two went by, you know, I ain't hearing nothing back, and then, um, but I was still, you know, grinding, still doing what I gotta do and everything, like, being known in, like, my college town mm-hmm. for the videos and stuff. And then, um, yeah, that's when I got a call in January. And then it's from Christoph. He's like, yo, I got a big opportunity for you. Boogie coming out with his first tour. And like, yeah, bro, like, we want to bring you. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't want to get any other video- videographer, like, you know, in the city. Like, mm. we just want to stick with one. And I was just like, yo, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. on the road. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just, I've been just going crazy ever since. And, hey. Let's ride. So talk a little bit about that tour life. How is that? Because um, everybody thinks of the tour life. It's like, yo, it's yeah. it's a great time and everything. But, you know, people are working. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's one thing that I learned about it. Um, a lot of people think that the tour is fun. You know, they think you go have fun. Don't get me wrong. Like, there's your fun times. You know what I'm saying? Obviously. But, however, like I said, bro, after that third day, bro, it's work, bro. You mm-hmm. feel me? Because it's just you start to get in a system. And it's just a lot of people think that just because you go from... 
every city that is fun. No, like you feel me? Sometimes you miss your flights, or you know what I'm saying? You, like it's just it's a lot of stuff. You Life know what happens. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> different hotels. You if you got kids, you miss your family, blah, blah, but constantly spending money on the road. Like mm-hmm. it's just it's a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot. I feel like it's a lot of behind the scenes that people don't see. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But for the most part, again, like it is fun, yeah. and I'd rather be doing this than you know what I'm saying. Of course, Anything yeah. Else. Definitely. What's it? What well, What was your favorite city, and what was the city that surprised you? One where you were like, "Damn, I did not expect that from this city." Seattle. I'm gonna be yeah. Real with you. Yeah. Seattle. I don't know for some reason because it's just I'm gonna be real with you. Like it's been such a blessing that some of these places that I've been to, mm-hmm. I never thought or dreamed of going to you know what i'm saying so it's like when we went to seattle i was just like yo this is crazy like we're on a i'm, I'm you know we're from miami so we already on the down south east coast so just to go like way up top northwest, northwest you know what i'm saying like it was different you know what i'm saying and and even i say the most different part about it was for the tours that we drove you mm-hmm. know like from from la to sacramento to portland to seattle that was cool you know oh, what i'm saying man. like on a sprinter like we was literally driving through mountains like it was different you, you know have family saying? in california too, yeah right? i got family yeah that's why i was born in there i think that's from originated yeah so that you know say it was cool or whatever but seattle definitely stood out for me um they got the um the the free weed not free weed the um the dispensaries, the dispensaries mm-hmm. where you can buy the weed and everything. Yeah, because it's thought, legal. Then. Yeah, it's legal out there. So that was really cool, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, <laughs> different experience. Yeah, it was definitely. I hear it's, you can't actually just like go out on the street and you know light a J yeah, or yeah. something. Yeah, they they, they um, have like certain areas because you got to think about children. Too, exactly. Man. They they treat it like you know what I'm saying as if it's like alcohol. You could go into the store, you know, buy alcohol, but you just can't walk around the streets and just drink it and be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you're gonna get arrested for that. Mm-hmm. So the same thing applies with the weed. You can go buy it and everything, but at least we know we can smoke it in the backyard of our own home right and nobody can knock on the door and tell us we're doing something wrong you right. know what i'm saying because like yeah you can't and it takes out the stress of like shows too exactly. if people are smoking at shows it just makes it a lot more peaceful to be yeah, honest exactly. you know what i'm saying like dec- decriminalize you yeah. know decriminalize we <laughs> do that yeah <laughs> it's, they're, it's, they're working on it yeah they're they're, it's, it's it. a lot of comp- there are a lot of complications to that because yeah, exactly. there's a lot of layers to that too yeah you got a lot of hands in the jar that don't want to take them out exactly it's a, it's a big subject that's yeah. another day that's <laughs> another day uh so so seattle was your favorite city or that was the one that um, surprised you i wouldn't say favorite it was definitely um or it surprised me um so far my favorite city I don't know, man. He's thinking I, right now. Yeah, I'm thinking. I would, <laughs> I would have to say, bro. I mean, Miami will always be, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like that's Outside I, of that's Miami, what, then. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because you b- born here, you yeah. know? Well, I was born in California. Well, Oh, born in Cali. Yeah, that's right. Race here. Race here. But um, I can say the city that I... My favorite as of today, I have to say, for some reason, bro, I just... I like New York, bro. Yeah. It just for the... Because I've been out there, it's like so many times, you know what I'm saying? Like like doing videos and on work and stuff like that like i just like the accessibility of everything mm. you know what i'm saying like out here like you know you always got to drive somewhere or you got to take everything's it, far you know, away yeah, everything's far you're going to take at least 30 40 minutes to get to True. where you need to be you know in new york like it's oh i'm hungry i'm going downstairs <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> everything's oh, compact exactly i'm bored i'm tired i'm going downstairs not tired but i'm bored i'm going downstairs mm. you know what i'm saying and it's just like everything's downstairs and i like that you know yeah. what i'm saying like it really is a city that never sleeps. You got yeah. something to do at all times. Yeah, literally, bro. Literally, bro. Like, we was out there. Um, yeah, I was just out there with um, with Ronnie J and everything. And, you know, we had a little run. And I was out there with 55 bags. Yeah, 55 bags and, and Ronnie J. And, uh, yeah, we was out there on our little run and everything. But it was just... Were those connections nonstop. through A Boogie? Um, No. Um, Ronnie J, I actually met him, like, a long time ago, bro, last year. I shot a music video for him. I, this is what it was. For him, um, I remember I was on iTunes, and his song popped up. Mm-hmm. And I listened to it, and I was like, oh, this is pretty. You know what I'm I was like, it's decent. I was like, this is pretty cool. I was like, who is this guy? You know what I'm saying? Then I researched him, and I looked him up, and I seen that he was a producer, and he does stuff with Denzel Curry and stuff. And I was like, okay, so I guess, like, his... Hit, like him as an artist like you know what I'm saying like rapping and singing and all this he does it's kind of like you know swept under the rug like mm. people just know him as his, from his producing you know mm-hmm. so then I reached out to him I was like yo bro this is a fire song let's shoot a music video you know what I'm saying yeah. like this needs to be seen this needs to be heard and then I'm not gonna lie this is this is when I back when I first started you know I was doing a lot of DMing a lot of people how long ago was this um timeline was last year last year like January, no, February, no, March, like February. Last year. Yeah. L- last year before summer. Okay. Right before summer. 
Yeah, but um, yeah. So yeah. I was just DMing, um, DMing them and everything. Like I mean, DMing like a lot of people. They wasn't responding because I was fresh and new. But I remember my DM Ronnie. He hit me back. And he was like, "Yo, bro, like, you feel me? Let me see you run some of your work. Let's do it, whatever." So I sent him some work. He was like, "Yeah, you know, what I'm saying? let's pay this, whatever. We can do it." Mm -hmm. And then um. Yeah, long story short though, but I was supposed to do it. He kept dubbing me a couple of times. Like we were supposed <laughs> to set some up and like he'll like not respond or whatever. But um, what it was is that I took a trip to California that summer, and surprisingly he was out there too. And so um, yeah, we shot a music video out there, and it was really yeah. First dope. video was in Cali. Yeah, first That's... video it was in Cali, and it was dope, bro. And it's just like I don't know that right there. Just it was a different experience because um. Like, again, like, it's when I first started, so, you know, I just got my camera. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, no Rona, no lighting, no nothing, you know? And just, like, I don't know, he was just patient with me. You know what I'm saying? He was very humble for that. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. just, like, he really gave me an opportunity and really showed that what I can do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, like, it was dope, bro. Like, we drove out up in the mountains. I don't know if you ever seen a music video before, but, no, um, I yeah, I'll show it to you okay, and cool. anything, but, um, yeah. We shot, um, it was up in the mountains. Like, it was real dope, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, it was, it was crazy, bro. It was crazy. But yeah, but just ever since that event, though, bro, like, we've been, you know what I'm saying? Like, cool, yeah, cool you feel yeah. me? Like, even though he be out doing his thing, you know, getting his money, I'm out grinding, getting my money. At the end of the day, we always end up, like, clicking back together yeah. at right moments. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Which is just dope, bro. That, yeah, just dope. that's the way to work it, man. It's like yeah. a friend, friend in the business that's also get a bag with, yeah, as exactly, you said. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, yeah, man. So, so what is it kind of like being around that environment? Because that environment can kind of get tiring, I would feel like. But it also is an adrenaline rush that so many people want to feel too. So you kind of get to feel it. But like, what what is it to you? Um, you, you, get, you come up with some good questions. <laughs> I like this. I like this. <laughs> it was the truth. But um, on the real though, um, I can honestly say, yeah, it's like. It's perception. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of the stuff, like, I can honestly say I don't really get, like, celebrity shock or anything like mm -hmm. that from, like, seeing somebody special. It's just, it's, it's cool, though. You feel me? Like, being around, like, oh, okay, that's so and so. Oh, that's so and so. Blah, blah, blah. But, um, yeah, for the most part, though, it, it is definitely, like, perception. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it's the industry for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can honestly say the one time that I did get like a, li a little bit of um like celebrity shock or whatever is um um at the Boogie had a show and um his show at PlayStation Theater and he brought Joel Santana out Ooh. and yeah back in the day you know what I'm saying <laughs> that's what I used to listen to I'm talking about hey I caught this the hard CDs and oh, everything man. so then when I just seen it I was just really like I was really out there just like you know you what I'm saying yeah. <laughs> like I was in the crowd or something like you know what I'm saying like. But yeah, that's you like just a, feeling yeah, it. I was just feeling. It. I was like, yo, this is dope. You feel me? Like, uh -huh. That's Joel. You yeah. feel me? Like Ipsel. I was like, that's lit. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. um, yeah. Other than that, bro, like, I'm not really like feel me like shook mm -hmm. by none of that or nothing. Like, I just that's like, good, yeah, man. I try to keep it business. Keep bro. it business, yeah. and, and people probably feed off that too. Where it's yeah, not definitely. like, damn, bro, this guy's you know, yeah, I, always I, asking for an autograph or something. Exactly. Always asking for something. I could definitely um say I think that that has definitely helped me. Like a lot of people, like in this industry so far that I've like you know what I'm saying been able to creep in like kind of know that you know what I'm saying like, I'm very genuine in what I do mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like I'm, I'm not really funny be like yo yo I'm trying to do this for you blah, 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 because I'm trying to get my followers up but no nah, bro you feel me like if I reach out to you for a video it's always because I think your song is dope you feel mm -hmm. me so or I'll be like yo bro you feel me like you just dropped the tape yo bro this song is dope bro you need a visual for it like you feel me I already got a treatment right now let's do something you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying like it's never on like no groupie you know what I'm saying like groupie shit bro like right. I always try to work with people who like you know like who who gave me opportunities and who we generally have like a connection with you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like a relationship with business wise right know? business yeah for yeah. sure because at the end of the day it really is just it's business yeah, but it's then business, but bro. then it grows into friendships yeah it definitely, too, yeah, which yeah, is definitely cool. grows yeah. into friendships which is cool you know what i'm saying with the right people with the right people yeah, yeah definitely the ones the right that like people. you said that you just click and vibe with yeah exactly so it's kind of so you're going on tour now with with boogie right yeah. when, when do you leave the um, that's 19th? the bigger artist tour that starts on 19th 19th? 19th yeah and and where some of the cities are going it's a u.s tour north north american tour yeah u.s tour um i can honestly bring up some of the dates mm -hmm. um if y'all want y'all should get y'all tickets though for that mm -hmm. Um, they're on. You can go on Boogie's Instagram or HBTL page, or yeah, just Google it. It'll Go, pop yeah, up. yeah, yeah, just Google it. It'll pop up. But um, while you're looking for that, I'm I'm just curious. So, what makes your directing approach different than kind of like other people's? Like, what what it makes J and B, you know, m makes it special? What makes J and B special? Um. I think for the most part, um, after you said you're humble, but I want you to just kind of, you know, brag a little bit, bro. I want to see what's for real. Like what, what's good with you? Like, 
Um, honestly, I can say the quality is what got me through the door. The quality is definitely what got me through the door. But like I said before, I think the most part why um, a lot of people like working with me is just the genuineness that I have mm-hmm. in my craft. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to treat no other um, artist or anybody, you know what I'm saying, different than the next person. You know what I'm saying? Like, like again, like, when it comes to these doing music videos and everything, I don't do it, like, just to, like, I don't know, like, just to get a lot of views off the videos. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I do it because like, I have, like... I'm in touch with the music, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it's bigger than just visuals, you know what I'm saying? Like, again, like, I want to, like, we're marketing them, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're trying to get them in the right hands with the right people, you know what I'm saying? To push your craft, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, it's not, again, not just give me a video and just take your money and going by, you know? Like, you're going to get something behind that, of you know, with longevity. Yeah. yeah. And then if you, you want to always have that continued work and for them to know that, you yeah, know, exactly. you can always count on me. Like, I'll be there. You yeah, got exactly. it. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whenever they call, I'm like, yo, I need you, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I work with people and everything. For like sure. That. You know what I'm saying? Like, even a lot of people, a lot of people be afraid to, like, reach out to me videos because they think I tax or whatever. Which, you know, so you're going to pay something. But I can guarantee you, like, if you, if you do a video with me and you, you know what I'm saying, pay me whatever I want the first time. You know what I'm saying? The second or third time, I'm going to work with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be too, like, yeah. okay, they're about their business, blah, blah, blah. Like, I see they, you know what I'm saying? Okay, what you trying to bring to the table this mm-hmm. time? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that's what it's about, bro. It's just keeping them connections and those relationships and continue networking. Just building. So was this something that you had a passion for since you were a kid? Like, is, is or is this kind of newfound? Or what? How, how did this come about? Oh. Um, it's actually a very long story. It's, um, well, we got time, bro. Yeah, we got a little time. We got a little time. <laughs> um, long story short just growing up i was just always like in the um i guess creative atmosphere you know what i'm saying like um in elementary i did art or well, everybody did art but like, i actually like won like competitions off like with my art and stuff like that or, like drawing and painting and stuff mm-hmm. like going into like school and stuff i was like making beats and stuff like it wasn't like nothing serious but it's just like i actually knew how to do them you know what i'm saying so you're like, tapping the creative mind yeah you know what i'm saying and people really used to like come to me you know so i used to like give out a couple beats or whatever you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah and then I, mean, I used to rap a little bit you know what i'm saying like even at the um in high school like we had a um uh, I forgot, I think the Black History Show or something. Like, I performed. Like, I was <laughs> rapping, bro. Like, you, know, you feel what I'm saying? So it's just like, I was always just like in touch with like art and like music and just creating. Like, and oh, yeah, I even played the trumpet, bro. I played the trumpet in, in elementary. I um, did too for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, that's dope, bro. Yeah, yeah I was, bro. I was dope, bro. Like, yeah. I was, I, I was, was first, I was first chair, bro. Then I remember I got bumped down the second. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie. We had a competition and he beat me, bro. He was beat me. I was tight, bro. I'm not gonna lie. But, um,. <laughs> But um, yeah, bro. Um, I was going. Yeah, so yeah, I was just always like you know in that creative atmosphere or whatever. But um, yeah, just basically when I was in college, um, I was just hit with a situation, you know. Um, basically, that yeah that that year before that summer, um, that I started getting into videos and everything. You know, me and my mom and my sister was hit with a foreclosure with the house. Yeah. So we ended up losing the house and everything, and we had to go stay at our cousin's crib. And then while I was staying at our cousin crib, you know, I was on my internship. And this is when I was just all about college. Like, I was mm-hmm. about the American dream. Like, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to graduate, you know, get a house, a picket fence, a dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just, the, you know, the regular the American regular dream. Life, yeah. yeah, you know. And But, yeah, we was hit with that foreclosure. And that's just when my world kind of, like, flipped upside down. You know what I'm saying? Because it was just like, oh, shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? This shit's kind of serious. Like, we really, like, quote, unquote, homeless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We were staying at our cousin crib whatever and then um yeah so i was on this internship you know i was working on like basically like all day from like 7 a.m like 7 p.m at enterprise mm-hmm. so that was crazy bro and then and i had a kid at the time too so then right after i go you know spend time with my kid and i i used to get home probably like 12 a.m or whatever like 1 a.m and then but the who i was staying with or whatever they just you know they ain't like that or whatever and then long story show ended up bumping heads and i got kicked out the house and then like i was really like homeless homeless you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. like um, I met a couple of my buddies let me uh, stay at a crib, but mainly like you know, what I'm saying my girl at the time, she um she let me stay at her crib, or whatever. But like it was sometimes you know, what I'm saying where I really had to like sleep in my car and like wake up, go to homie's crib, shower, go to my internship, or like that ass had to like lie and tell my mom, oh yeah, I got somewhere to stay, and tell my girl, oh yeah, I got somewhere to stay. You feel me? And just mm-hmm. feel me because I didn't want to really like be a burden on nobody. You I know what I'm saying? Mean. So I really like I really even just, though you wouldn't be a burden, yeah, you know, but it just would've helped you. But, I just but, you know yeah, what I'm saying? You, yeah, yeah, it's just like what I felt like. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to stay with my mom. You feel what I'm saying? And I didn't really want to like go stay on my girl's crib like that because it's just like you feel me? Like why mm-hmm. like grown man? Like you know what I'm saying? It's just no, it was yeah. weird, bro. It was just a very weird experience for me. 
But um, yeah, long story short, um, did what I had to do, went back up to college, and I had already had a place up there, you know. Um, I grinded, got my money, got my apartment up there. And but going up there, my mom told me straight up. Um, she was just like, yo, like you know, I can't help you no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, is you gonna really have to like fend for yourself and really like you know try to figure it out? And even at the time when she was helping me, like she was helping me, but it wasn't nothing crazy. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, it, like it was just basically I was completely cut off at this point. I was like, damn, yo, like this is crazy, bro. Like I really, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I gotta get it, bro. So long story short, I start getting jobs and everything, um, trying to work and everything, but it just. Everybody who knows in Tallahassee is such a small college town. Like it's very hard to find like good money. You know what I'm saying out there, or whatever. And I just and I was a full time college student in SBI, like in the business mm-hmm. program. Like we taking like seven classes. Like it was just ridiculous, bro. So I was only getting checks for like two hundred dollars, bro. Like mm-hmm. yeah, bro. Like it was ridiculous, bro. And my rent was like five something, six hundred dollars. You feel what I'm saying? Like, Without utilities, I bet. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like it was real, bro. Like it was just it was crazy, bro. But um. Yeah, long story short, but I'm not even gonna lie, bro. It got to a point where I started selling weed for a little bit, yeah. bro. Like that serious, bro. Like I was like diamond and dubbing it, bro. Like you feel me? Just making like petty cash just so I can have, you know what I'm saying, for food and for gas and shit like that, whatever. But then I just I know I wasn't like, you feel me, that wasn't like my life. Like right. you feel me, that's not me, you know you what I'm saying? That to get by. Yeah, so then I just end up like um I stopped doing that or whatever and then um Yeah, long story short, bro, I ended up getting evicted, bro, while I was out there in mm. college and then that's when I was just like, yo, this is this is serious, bro. Like, you feel me? I'm really out here right now, bro. And then, um, yeah, I ended up moving in with my girl at the time. You know, since she was, she was, she was very nice and helpful with the situation. So I ended up moving in with her. And then I remember was coming into that following year, and then I was getting a refund check from my school. And then I remember, um, yeah, they gave me back like um, over three bands. I can't remember exactly. It was close to four. I can't remember, remember exactly. About about four thousand dollars. Yeah, basically about four thousand dollars. And um. Yeah, I just had to make a decision with myself, bro. I was like, hmm, am I going to use this money to, like, try to get this apartment back? But I knew that a couple months I'm going to be right back in the same situation. Or am I going to use this money to kind of, like, you know, do this video thing, what I've been thinking about doing, you know? But I just knew I didn't have the resources or the money for it. Mm. But I knew that I can create my income off this, you know? Because one thing about me that I've learned about myself in college is that, like, I'm I'm like, I'm like good in business. You know, I know how to sell, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I'm good at that, you know? You're talking with people. Yeah, you know, so I'm, I'm a people's person. Because you can relate to both exactly, sides. Exactly, to both man. sides, to anybody, you know? And um, so, yeah, bro, I just, I made that decision for myself, bro. Like, even people, if you don't like it or whatever, I just, you know what I'm saying? I did it for myself, you know? And, yeah, I invested. I got my camera and everything. And, like, even before I got my camera, Nico, literally, bro, I was researching, bro. I'm talking about, like, when I found, when I knew what camera I wanted, bro, mm-hmm. I was on YouTube, bro, looking how to use that camera before I even had the camera. Before I even got my, like, computer to edit and everything, I was looking how to color grade, how to do it, like, how to do everything, bro. Long story short, I ended up getting a camera, and then that's when I told you I did the um, free music video. I started making my little money. Mind you, I didn't have a computer yet, bro. So I had to take these videos, go to J school in my college, bro. Mm-hmm. And mind you, I'm not in J school. That's the journalism school, if you, if nobody's not familiar. Mm-hmm. And I was in the business school. And if you're not in a school, you can't really, like, you, you know can't use their, Yeah, you can't use their resources, yeah. you know? So I was in there on a match, you know, editing these music videos. And I'm talking about just, like, in the back. Just you know what I'm saying, making sure nobody's mission sitting. impossible. Yeah, bro, but I, bro, I was really like making my money, like yeah, trapping yeah. out of there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was yeah. really making my bread, bro. And then yeah, so I just like I kept going with that, and then eventually I was able to save on my bread and just basically get all the film equipment that I need, like the computer, the laptop, the the Ronin, the, the drone, the, you know what I'm saying, everything. And then just like yeah, bro, from there I just went full force, bro, and just I'm not even gonna lie, bro. I ended up like dropping out of school for the simple mm-hmm. fact that like. The business was just like, you know what I'm saying? It was going... Because I came up kind of fast, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. a, a lot of people even kind of say, you know, it, it was less than a year, bro. You feel what I'm saying? And it's just, yeah, business was getting out of control. And I was just like, hmm, I'm sorry, bro, but I, I can't be bro no more, right. bro. You feel me? If if anybody got me, it's me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I can't depend on nobody right now, you know? But not... You could always go back, if anything. Exactly. And, and I always knew that in my head. I said, hmm, I can always go back to school, but I know I can't come back to these, these opportunities. These opportunities you know, may they never only come, come again. They may never come again, bro. You feel me? And I just knew I was hot in Tallahassee at the time with the videos, bro. And I was like, I have to. You feel me? Because if I don't now, when's the next time? That's you awesome, know? bro. You really when's distinguish yourself right yeah. from the beginning. Yeah, bro. But that story, wow, man! I didn't know all that. That's yeah. It was definitely um, 
it was definitely character building. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not even gonna say, bro. You feel me? Like I'm, I'm a perfect person. And I do everything right. You know what I'm saying? Now, like, like even still to this day, it's still learning factors that comes with this. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's all about just finding something that you love, that you have a passion for, that you can monetize, and just go full force, bro. Don't let nobody tell you like what you can do and what you can't do. You feel me? Like the the photographer Shin, he was saying that uh, he. You, every time you're on a, a shoot, you, you're always learning. You always yeah, learn definitely. something new because every shoot is it's completely different. different. It's completely different. You, one day you may have a shoot with a crazy budget and be on top of the Empire State Building or something, you know? One day you may be inside of somebody's garage and they, I don't know, drinking <laughs> lean or something <laughs> in the music video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. doing something crazy, you know? Like, just weird. But, yeah. So, which one, if you had to choose, which one do you like better? The, those bigger shoots or the, the smaller shoots? Um, I'm sure you love both of them. Obviously, yeah, I like that because they they all just come with a different. cool experience. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like all of them. Like you know what I'm saying? Like like a perfect example. Like you know what I'm saying? When you came out to the shoot with me, when we did that shoot for that artist on South Beach, and they you know what I'm saying? They brought the foreigners out and stuff like that. You know, like that's pretty cool. You know, because when you're shooting, you know, you really stop traffic. Like people are looking like, hey, what's going on? Like who's the director? Who's your, there was oh, definitely a crowd. Yeah, you there know, like who, who, what's that contraption in his hand? You know what I'm saying? Like you really like you make a scene. You know, and then a lot of people come up to you and like you get business off of that or whatever. But then it's like the really really big ones. It's like it's dope. It's cool, but it's always a hassle to like you know what I'm saying. Set up because you, know mm-hmm. you need that budget behind it, you know. But I, but once you do get it, though, it's, it's dope, bro. Because one time I was on a yacht, bro. Now it was crazy, bro. It was crazy, bro. <laughs> that was dope. You don't even have to tell those stories. Yeah. I I can leave that to their imagination. That yeah, must have been amazing. Dope. Yeah, it was it was a dope experience. Yeah, bro. man, for sure. So that's cool. You you get to experience all these. Mm. Like I said, what people wish that they could experience, yeah. but people don't understand that you're also working, you're documenting it too. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a, it's a balance that some people might not even be able to handle. Some people might just go out there and, you know, they get lost in that, in that lifestyle too. Yeah. And that, then they lose it. Mm, that's, mm, that's good that you said that. That's funny that you said that. Cause that's honestly one thing that, um, that can happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even going to lie. It was even at one point where I kind of felt like I was like losing myself and I was just like, yo, like. You know what I'm saying? What are you doing? Like, this is is this really you? Like, mm-hmm. it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just yeah. you can really get lost out there and really like be in trouble. You know, because again, like, I was dropping out of school, bro. You feel me? And like, at the end of the day, you know, getting a degree that's like your security. You know, you right. know, you're guaranteed a job. You'll never be broke. But it's like for me to like, you know, kind of deteriorate I, from that in a sense. And like, sometimes you know, it's I don't know. It's, it's you're breaking the mold if you yeah, think about it. Because the norm is to go that route that you're saying. Yeah. So for you not to do that, but you're banking on yourself, yeah. which some people, I mean, you got to do it. Like yeah. that's, you just, just do it. I remember that that was one of the things you said on the shoot. Yeah. Uh, we were talking just real quick. You said, you know, people are afraid to do things and you just said, you just got to do it. Yeah. That, that's, that's one thing you got to do. Like you can't be afraid to take a risk. You know what I'm saying? Like, like sometimes, you know what I'm saying? I can be a bit compulsive on things. But, like, if, if it's the right thing, you know what I'm saying? If it's the right risk, bro, like, you got to take it, bro. And just mm-hmm. bet on yourself, you know what I'm saying? Just know that, like, at the end of the day, bro, like, you got yourself, bro. Just do it, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, like, yeah, bro, like, a lot of people would be reaching out to me, bro, about, like, oh, yo, how'd you do it? Like, yo, what are the tears? This and that, I just tell them, just like I told you, bro, just do it, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to be sought trash. And, bro, my first music video was trash, bro. You know, my first <laughs> recap video was trash, you know what I'm saying? Bro? Like, if, my first music video I got paid was like what two hundred dollar trash. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but it's just it's all about doing that and like building. Just, yeah, building and figuring out because you're going to get tired of failing, bro. You're going to get tired of doing something wrong, and once you get tired of it, you're going to make a change. You know, mm. and to you know what I'm saying? Once you make a change, that's how you get a different outcome. You know, and it's just like yeah, bro. It's just so you just have to do it, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, just do it. You really just go out there and you gotta put the boots to the ground. Yeah, exactly. And then bro. learn. But what's uh what's something that you didn't know about yourself that you kind of figured out through this this Mm. route of life that you're going through Mm, this career that's a cool question right there um something that i learned about myself is that um i could be a little impatient sometimes Mm. um and sometimes i can like i don't want to necessarily like quote unquote say that I use people but it may come off like that to them which I don't really you know what I'm saying didn't really understood at the time like sometimes I could be like 
I could be like a little like demanding, but in like in a passive aggressive way, if mm. that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? To kind of get what I want because I know that I can get it. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like I, like again, you feel me? Like, like I'm be real. I'm good with my words. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a I'm a businessman at the end of the day, bro. That's why you know what I'm saying? Like I don't even really say that it's like this this business that I have, bro. It wouldn't be nothing if I didn't know business, bro. Because I didn't come into this really knowing cameras like that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like so, it had to be more from the business aspect to really. You know, make my money, but um, yeah, bro. Impatience. Yeah, yeah. yeah impatience. Okay, yeah. So yeah, definitely like um, impatience was like one of them, bro. And just um, but it, I can understand that because you blew up so fast yeah. too. So you kind of had all this kind of like, whoa, you know, I can do all this, but you always had that fallback like, all right, I have more. Like they're still yeah. coming. So like, why isn't it happening more? Like you yeah. know, I can understand how you would want more since you've already been thrusted kind of in a yeah, and that's, light. Yeah, that's crazy that you said. That's exactly how I feel about it because that's exact, that's crazy. That's exactly mm -hmm. how I honestly feel about the situation because it's like, I feel like, again, I came in so fast where it's just like, damn, okay, this ain't really what I thought it was going to be. Yo, right. I want more, bro. I like, want this, more. I want this to the next it, level. Bro, yeah. me? I need to keep going, bro. Like, and it's just, which is good that's though good, you know it, it, it pushes good, you because you, know? you have ambition too yeah, which exactly. is also important and that hunger to keep going yeah like yeah that's okay that's another thing that i learned about myself bro i'm not a complacent person bro like one thing about me bro like a lot of people can like sleep in to like mad late and like you know what i'm saying me bro i can go out and come home at 4 or 5 a.m bro i'm gonna be up next day before 10 bro mm -hmm. even just because like i just have that drive now bro like if i'm not up i feel like i'm missing something you know what i'm saying like i just that's i have so to true, go get man. it bro you know what i'm saying like even people like yo bro like you're always on your phone but yo because I'm, I'm figuring stuff out you know i'm hitting people up yo bro what's what events are coming up yo yo what, like what's the calendar like what, what weekend is this you know i got partners in like you know what I'm saying, different states and texas and new york and california you know what i'm saying they hit me up with different business you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. it's just i felt like it's about the people you have around you, you know what i'm saying like sure. i can honestly say bro like like, yeah, I still have friends, and you know what I'm saying? The friends I came up with, it, I'm still cool with them and everything. But the majority of the people that's been around me lately is like, you know what I'm saying? It's clients and, and people who, you know what I'm saying, who have that same drive as you, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and people who are on the same route as you. Because, like, that's the, like, the motivation that you need, you know? Exactly. You need to be around people who are, who are attacking their dream and aren't afraid. So, you know what I'm saying? Times when you feel down and feel like, you know what I'm saying? You can call that person. They're going to tell you, yo, it's okay. I'm still here, you know what I'm saying? Keep doing what you got to mm -hmm. do, you know? And, but, yeah, bro, like. Wow, yeah, you keep going, you could you see yeah. other people going. Yeah, it's yeah. like how can I go down if Jeremy's going, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. Like he, Jeremy keeps going, I'm gonna keep going too. Yeah, exactly. Well, and people can feed off that and that's something that, that's important. That's a good power to have. And yeah, like definitely. I see that you're trying to use that positively too. Yeah, def I definitely trying to use this in a positive way, bro. Because mm -hmm. just just like you said, bro, like I just feel like if I stop doing what I'm doing, the next person that may be looking up to me, you know, that I may be motivating, he may be like, Dang, oh well, Jeremy just stopped and he failed, he quit. Maybe I shouldn't really pursue this. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should go, you know, do the normal thing. Maybe I should go back to working that job that I hated. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, but I, I want to motivate and touch people and let them know that, like, whatever, whatever it is that you want to do in life, that you can do it. Just do it. You so, know what I'm saying? Just, <laughs> so, just is take the that ultimate step. goal to be in front of camera, motivational speaking? Would you want to do that too? Um, eventually, um, definitely. I feel like I could warm up to mm -hmm. it and um, really get into that field but for the most part i just want to like kind of set myself up for success right now you know what i'm saying just really get these brands and these businesses going you know like i got jmp marketing under my belt some people may not know i got souls on demand under my belt shoot online shoot talk about that a little bit yeah from. yeah we're um yeah basically um i have a partner up in new york that i do business with um we got like all the yeezys bro all the shoes bro authentic 100 percent authentic um, we got Yeezys, Jordans, all the V2s. See, that's someone I'd love to get on the podcast, too. Someone who knows, like, the ins and outs of the yeah. shoe world, But you want to know what's crazy about him, bro? He's young, bro. Yeah? Yeah, he's young, bro. He's How old is he, like, 12? Bro, he's 13. <laughs> he's 13. Bro, and that's the craziest part about him, bro. I never thought I'd be doing business with, like, a little kid. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. But it's like, he knows what, he knows his stuff. He knows what he's talking about, and we really make money off of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the crazy part about it, bro. And it's just... 2017 is different bro yeah. it's different bro like this day and age with social media and it's funny how you were talking about how you're always on your phone people kind of complain yeah. about that i spoke with reina yeah. and uh reina noriega and yeah. she she was saying how i mean yeah it may look like i'm on my phone all the time but i'm handling business exactly you know and people exactly. don't really understand they don't that. realize that yeah they just think of it as like oh my god he's just always on his yeah, phone it's not like we're playing a game yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like no nah, we're looking at important emails Word. and messages and exactly. you know things like like that yeah definitely uh but yeah man uh 
So so shameless plug here. I just want to know, like, st- tell people about JMB, maybe a little bit of, about kind of like the future, what, what's going on with that, and um, just kind of to close it out, bro. Uh, well, basically, uh, yeah. say whatever you want to say. Whatever you know, this open say. platform, bro. Just, just platform. before we close it out, because. Oh um, well, I guess to close out, like I said before, um, JMB marketing directed by JMB. You know, what I'm saying we're more than just a film company. You know, like yeah, we do these vid- visual. Damn, <laughs> you get it, you get it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. JMB Marketing, directed by JMB, is more than just a film production company. We do more than just do visuals for clients and businesses. Um, again, bro, we like to just create that relationship, create that experience, mm-hmm. and just, you know, create that opportunity not only for me but for you and not you know what I'm saying? Just like we wanna build off of each other and to really like make it to the top and just you know if anybody has a dream out there no matter what it is bro rapping basketball doing videos a boxer a professional bottle flipper i don't care bro just tennis like player. tennis player you know what i'm saying i used to play a little tennis <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just playing but, no i'm serious but um, <laughs> yeah but just yeah just go full force bro and just because i'm telling you like it's only a matter of time bro it's just a matter of time when it'll happen mm-hmm. For sure, well, man. Work out. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you taking time. I really know. appreciate you too, Nico. Of course, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's I, crazy, bro. I, what, honestly, bro, I would have never thought, bro, that we'll be doing something. I like know, this, man. It's, it's crazy, insane, bro. right? You this right here is this. Honestly, this right here is a perfect example. Of what that people should see that is off networking. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. me and Nico, we knew of each other through mutual friendship. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Even through that mutual friendship, was through a mutual friendship. You know what I'm saying? But just for the simple fact that we, we kept that relationship and it was just, you know what I'm saying? Cool vibes or whatever. So mm-hmm. it's like well, that time when we met again, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it was, was cool. genuine. Yeah. yeah. It was like we seen each other last yeah. week. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And look here. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about up. everything, bro. Yeah, bro. This is dope, bro. We definitely got to talk about that weed thing, though. Oh, yeah, we got to talk definitely. about that later. We got yeah, <laughs> to yeah. catch up on that. Yeah, definitely. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. All right. Jeremy's story is is one of those stories where you can't help but to get inspired. After I was listening to the episode a few times, obviously because of the editing process, I have to hear it also many times. And every time he would talk about how how he started and how he was he took his refund check from school and all of that, and then he turned that into his business, and now he's touring overseas. It makes me want to gather some money and start up some other company too. It doesn't even have to be film. It could be something else and, you know, a racing company or something, whatever it is. And it just really makes me feel inspired. And after I listen to it, I, w- I just want to get up and do stuff and be active and, and really chase after because this man has really gone through so much how he went from being homeless and not really knowing where to be and, and, and not really having any support to now supporting his two kids, his family, you know, and doing everything that he can to really provide for them and and he's doing his best and man he's making it work because now he's got tours and i'm sure he's he's gonna get more tours and more money and more more people are gonna want him to to shoot his videos too and i just thank him so much for coming out on the podcast and really opening up and sharing his story because it's not an easy one to tell and and i appreciate anyone who's just genuine and and really he he was open about everything that he's been through and he's not hiding anything and guys, if you want to get in contact with him or you want him to help you make a, a really fire video, again, just look him up either on Instagram. He says he gets a lot of DMs, so that's a that's a spot to hit him up. It's directed by J- JMB or also on his YouTube page, which is also the same thing, directed by JMB. Uh, he's very simple, as you could tell, and that's what's a, a great part of working with him and it's part of his appeal is the fact that he makes everything simple and everything flowy, if that's even a word, flow. He makes everything flow where even though you may think that uh, it's taking a lot of time or it's a lot of work, man, he's he's a smooth operator. That's definitely what I can say. And uh, again, if you want to if you want to get us uh, an awesome video, check out the show notes. I'll have everything there, but it's real simple, directed by JMB. And watch out for his next tour. He's going to be in Europe now too for the Bigger Artist Tour. So, he's going to be out there uh, in Europe. So, catch him if you're out there. Uh, Jeremy, he's, he's going to be slanging some some vids out in Europe, getting some of that Renaissance uh, <laughs> architecture and stuff too, which is 
which is going to be sick. I can't wait to see some of those vids. And uh, Jeremy, thank you again so much for coming on, man. And I, I really appreciate it. And again, for opening up and sharing your story. And remember, guys, this is a perfect example of when you find your passion, you pursue it, everything can happen. So peace. Money sprung. Money sprung. Fuck it, I'm back with another one. Fuck it up and do another one. My niggas do not shoot dirty guns. Shoot it up and get another one. I keep on counting them hundreds. I think I'm falling in love with them. I keep on counting them hundreds, my nigga. I think that I'm money sprung. Money sprung, money sprung, money sprung my nigga. I think I'm money sprung. Money sprung, money sprung, my nigga. I think I'm money sprung. I keep on counting them hundreds. I think that I'm falling in love with them. I keep on counting them hundreds, my nigga. I think that I'm money sprung. Track after track and another one, no, that's a hit, they can't fuck with him Nigga, you don't gotta like me to understand where I'm coming from I know you would eat it, what's up, put you on a dick like a bubble gum Told herself to be the plug, now everybody wanna fuck with him Everybody need love, everybody need drugs, nobody wanna be a dub Every fit I put on, probably cost me like a dub I'm way too up, they can't keep up, yeah, yeah I'm way too stuck, I face two cups, yeah, yeah My new chain look like a puck, my nigga I'm icy as fuck, yeah, yeah I feel like the king of New York, my jewel is better than yours, yeah, yeah A hundred sitting on my neck, another hundred on the arm, yeah, yeah I put the city on my back, how can I ever go wrong, yeah, yeah I don't need no goopy love, go holla at my nigga Dom I put my number in your phone, just DM me if it was wrong I told her that my name was Artist, now she wanna call me Yardy Telling me about a party, told her I'm the one performing Fuck it up before the party started Fuck it, I'm back with another one, fuck it up and do another one My niggas do not shoot dirty guns, shoot it up and get another one I keep on counting them hundreds up, I think I'm falling in love with them I keep on counting them hundreds, my nigga, I think that I'm money from Money sprung, money sprung, my nigga, I think I'm money sprung Money sprung, money sprung, my nigga, I think I'm money sprung I keep on counting them hundreds, I think that I'm falling in love with them I keep on counting them hundreds, my nigga, I think that I'm money sprung I'm ahead of the race, floor on the gas, I'm passing the cops and I let on the chase If they come find out this weapon I place, they might just give me a federal case All of my folks had a residue taste, really presidential, win a presidential Counting blue strips with the president face, I got the votes, don't you love with the gate Yeah, yeah I got a chef at the crib, low ho, I don't never do dates Yeah, yeah, we are not looking for friends, so ain't no competitor safe Yeah, yeah, five in the morning, I'm drinking on dirty, it's never too late Yeah, yeah, leaving the spot, had to switch up the whip, they was checking the plates I'm still a menace, I do when I say what I want, give a fuck if you feel offended You selling your soul just to get attention, I curl with a pole cause I feel attention Trappers, they love me, they throwing that dawn, they get on the road with a pigeon in it No, but you know me, I'm really the dawn, I don't gotta try hard to fit the image Look at my cup, yeah, it's dirty dying I drop two bananas and shook up the fan. Booked in Atlanta, I go to the club with the paper and I throw a book on the dance. I am the one they was counting out. Now I get hundreds and count it out. Designer shit, they can't pronounce it. I'm styling out. They trying to spell it and sign it out. Yeah, yeah.